What's going on, guys? Welcome to another live stream session with Franklin. If you can see me, um, you can hear me, hit the like button. If you're watching this as a playback, thank you for stopping by. This is um, Saint Ligeti. It's a popular segment on my channel where we uh, pretty much discuss eclectic topics. So people send me their stories to Food Channel 1960 at Gmail. Dot com. If you can hear me, you can see me, please uh, do smash the like button, all right? So, um, are we going to start put, uh, picking on... Um, a picture and um, getting petty about the, the picture showing a woman's face. Come on, man. Come on. We're grown ups here, man. There's nothing sinister. It's just um, a picture that's visually appealing that sort of represents, you know, what I'm about to talk about. Simple as that. It's like a stock picture for me. All right. So let's not start dwelling on that. Sorry, I'm. I've got OCD with my glasses. When I clean my glasses, I hate when I have marks on it. And um, it just kind of bothers me. So, yeah, for those that wear glasses, you know that. So, um, from um, my live stream from um, a couple of days ago, you know, um, I was bombarded with all sorts of, um, you know, emails and stuff, you know, from people and all that stuff. So. And then a few hours later, I, I looked at my inbox and there were a plethora of stories along the lines of what I'm talking about. And there was actually about nine, you know, different ladies who are in a similar, you know, a bit of a long wounded stories. Of course, their stories are unique to them, but um, they're quite similar. So I said, you know, why not? But the one that stuck out for me was the one I used to um name give the video a title if you can hear me you can see me can i respectfully ask that you you know hit the like button and and, and stuff so yeah thank you so well yeah basically um this lady is back home right um in the motherland, and it's a classic um, immigrant story. So apart from the fact that I want to talk about these circumstance, um, once I go through that within a few minutes, I'll try not to drag out. Um, I am going to also share a few, you know, bullet points about the impact of, you know, long dis distance, you know, um, relationship. So the, um, the long and short was um, this woman is back home in the motherland. Um, yeah, if you need to sleep, Mr. Adewale, you need to sleep. Uh, you know, I don't know what part of the world you are in. Feel free to go get your sleep. You can always watch a playback, okay? Well, thank you, my bro. I appreciate you, man. So as I was saying, you know, the usual immigrant, you know, story. And um, she met her man. And then after a few years, he proposed. They settled down and then, you know, got married. They had the first child. So after having the first child, they started toying with the idea of going overseas, uh, just like numerous people. And um, initially it was a case of, oh, we're all going to, you know, go together and all that. But, you know, one of the common, you know, factor that people, uh, can you hear me? If it's lagging a bit, it's, you know, uh, Adiola, thank you, bro. Appreciate you. If it's lagging a bit, it's just the internet connection. I I apologize for it. Okay, but if you can hear me, just get on with the audio. Anyways, um, they both decided to you know move abroad. They, I mean, they were talking about it. So, but like I said, one of the major problems is money. It's always money that set people back, and usually some might be lucky to get you know. Uh, families to to help them or friends or something like that but for the most part money plays a major role in trying to move abroad right so anyways these um uh, 
these couple then decided that the man should, you know, go instead. So he left the motherland. So by the time they decided that, oh, he should go, like I said in the, my live stream a couple of days ago, by the way, if you're watching this, go and watch my live stream from a couple of days ago. Very interesting. You know, I've had loads of reviews and people, comments and emails and all that. Go check that out because that live stream led to this one. So eventually they decided to move abroad, but because they couldn't afford it and all sort of um, circumstances and all that stuff, they agreed that the man should go. There's always the perception that the man being, being the man will go do whatever he can. It be magic, bust through the bush, go make a way in the mother, you know, in, um, what do you call it? In the diaspora and then come back to get the family. That That is usually put on the shoulder. Most of the time it's the man. But like I said, one of the fundamental challenges is when people travel and if your foundation is already rocky or shaky or the visa you've gone with is totally wrong and stuff, you're just going to get trapped. So this brother hmm, left, uh, by the time he left, they had two children, left the wife and um, he got his visa and he left for the United States of America. And the whole plan with his wife was, oh, within you know, within two shakes of a duck still, within a year to two years, I'll make sure that I get you and the children, you come and join me in America and we can settle. Usually when you look at that on paper, it's a fantastic idea. Everybody wants their wife and kids and family unit under the same roof so you can carry on leaving. But life in the diaspora, being one, like I keep saying, that's, it's not a bed of roses, it comes with a plethora of challenges, complications. And the reason like I keep hammering is the system is set in place. You're the one taking yourself. And most of the time, being ill-informed, ignorance is one of the top of the list. People assume that they will be fine. And then you get into a system where everything is set in place then you are faced with reality and then you are left in the middle of nowhere and then you're trapped, you're living in the shadow of the system. You get the gist. So anyways, this brother left, got to the States, uh, an old friend accommodated him. And from the story, the friend was gracious enough to take him in. In fact, from, from day one, the friend said, dude, you can only live with me for, a maximum of six months. The friend told him, so we kind of knocked the friend. Said, dude, you know, because he was a one bed, you know, apartment. And the friend had a girlfriend at the time. The friend said, look, man, for old time's sakes, because we grew up together in the motherland, you can only put up with me for six months. And, you know, after six months, you're going to have to find a way to go sort yourself out. So that was the condition. And of course, somebody coming from the motherland, if that's the off offer on the table, you ain't, you know, you haven't got a choice but to say, yes, 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 no problems, I'll be fine, okay? Now, check this out. The brother got to the state. Reality set in, you know. The friend helped him with a couple of menial jobs here and there, you know, because he then soon realized that, you know, you need X, Y, Z to be able to navigate and all that. So it was, but it wasn't all that. It was earning pitans and stuff, just really hard, really difficult. And so what happened was he had to move out about five months later and then had to move into some shared apartment with some other people. And then, you know, you have to pay your bills and stuff. So dude could barely have enough disposable income to look after himself. He could send back home whatever he could send back home. So anyways, the long and short was, and this is where the reality puts you in a tight corner if you're living abroad. Um, usually, when you meet people that already live abroad in the system before you, they will sit you down and they will tell you straight, like, hey, yo, it's either you do this or you do that. And I can assure you, if you're a man or if you're a woman, it's not even gender specific, but in this circumstance, you're a man, you ain't got nothing. I can assure you, 
99.999% of the time, one of the offers that will come on the table is a yo, find a woman to regularize your status. Facts only, regardless of, oh, I've got my wife back home. I have two children. I love my wife dearly. If, if you are basically, you know, running from pillar to post and um, you sit down with one, two, three, four people, they will tell you straight like, hey, yo, got to find someone to settle with. And if you are the type that wants to say, oh, no, 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 I can't. You know, I cannot um, pay a visit into somebody else's sugar walls. It goes against my marital agreement. I appreciate that. You are absolutely fine in that regard. But then the truth is it's either you get out and go back in the name of honoring your marital agreement with your lovely woman back home or you remain trapped in the Western system, be at the bottom end of the spectrum for donkey years with no light at the end of the tunnel. This is human nature. It's one of the greatest, or not even greatest, I don't wanna use greatest, it's one of the worst um, psychological warfare that any human being can deal with if you're living in the side of the world. Now, they will tell you to do what you gotta do. Now, this brother, um, after a long time, a long time of suffering and stuff, eventually, you know, um, amalgamated his feelings with some um, woman that he found through somebody that knows somebody there in the West. Now he told his woman back home at the start of these process that are more of every she winning, single car, you know, like, oh, nothing. I'm definitely going, not going to dip into the honey pot, you know, um, cause it was the woman that sent me the story. Um, I am not going to slide, you know, down the sugar walls. Definitely not. Um, I'm just, it's just a contractual agreement. Um, just so I can sort myself and bring you and the children in. His mom and dad know, knew about this. Now, this is where I'm trying to put the woman's situation under the spotlight, right? You have your in-laws. You have your man's family. Did you hear that? Somebody that you're married to just told you over the phone that, hey, yo, I have... Um, um, in a way, put a process in place to start dipping into another man's honeypot in the name of, I have to find my footings here in the States. I need you to absorb that and to be reasonable, align with me. And what I would like you like to run concurrently with what I've just told you, regardless of how much damage that is done to your emotions is I also need you to remain faithful to me, cross your legs. You must not have any sexual desires. You must remain faithful whilst I'm over there. Of course, I'm trying to get papers so that I can bring you and your children. So the duty of loyalty only sits on your shoulder. And if the woman dares says, yada, 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 she will be found to be unreasonable. Even though I know this story is not gender specific, but the reason I'm banging on about the woman, I've got to be fair, because I hate being biased, is because this story, and there's about nine of them, was sent to me from different women who are currently trapped in this type of circumstance. I think the longest of them being, she's been waiting for almost 12 years. That's crazy. Now, so, in fact, she used to live um, in, a, in an apartment that the man was paying for and um, she was out of work, you know, challenges back home and stuff. Then because his money now started going to trying to sort of just a little bit support the other woman that was going to give him his American papers. He then told her to move in with the children with his parents. That's the ultimate 
ultimately backing you into a tight corner. So the woman didn't have a choice. The woman didn't have a choice but to move with her in-laws and two children because she couldn't no longer pay rent and her husband wasn't forthcoming because his excuse was, oh, um, my expenditure has gone up and um, sometimes I may have to support this woman and part of the process is kiwili jadi so that the papers can come out. I think it's a cold, coded statement of Muladima told you for a tuntuni kiwili jadi this new sugar wall must be catered to monetarily before she scatters the process. You get the gist? So, now, this woman said she waited and waited and waited. So it's been more than six years. This one that I'm referring to, more than six years going seven. She's been celibate. She's been mentally mentally she's ruined mentally emotionally shattered and the in-laws have been absolutely dreadful even her family have left her in the middle of nowhere and they're basically telling her you know because back home i digress unfortunately in the motherland this is when, when i talk about toxic culture there is undue pressure on the woman she's expected because if you dare even wave at another man whilst your man is overseas, your man's mama and his dad and his siblings and everybody down his family tree and the neighbors down the road will call you a slack. You dig? So she's there. And then on top of that, you have religiosity. You have the odd pastor and pastor missus and imams trying to further nail you down with their customized, you know, references to whatever scriptures that you must at all times be a virtuous woman, all right? The reason, like I said, this interests me is it's a prevalent problem in our society. The brother is over there because let's call a spade a spade. Some might say, oh, frankly, yeah, but you know, the problem is uh, the brother has to sort himself out. But let's call it spade a spade, man. While sorting yourself out, you are also sorting yourself out in the bedroom, right? And then you selfishly require the woman that gave birth to two kids that you're still married to on paper. You expect her to keep her legs together because how you've managed to tie her down is I am going to bring you to America. But there's a new honeypot in town that you are giving attention to. You and I know, even if she ever gets the chance to come to the States, it's going to be a hell of a problem because there's a new woman within your jurisdiction now. Now, the dude's family back home, uh, they've called out all sorts of names. They've made up even false allegations. She said she is, I mean, according to the email, I remember one of these ladies saying to me that, Franklin, my man has been away, her man, one of them here in the UK, um, for five and a half years. And she said, every now and again, my mother-in-law would tell my husband, that, oh, I am last Sunday at church, I spent 20 minutes talking to Dickin such and such and such. Oh, somebody said they saw me at the market laughing with Mr. such and such and such it would appear that I am distributing my honey pot because my husband is not in town. And on top of that, there is emotional abuse, uh, religiosity, even in the worst case scenario, people like this, their family members are usually involved that, oh, you must remain a virtuous woman, yada, 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 bloody, bloody, blah. So this woman, said it's now clear as day that her man ha now watch this so he's been telling her that oh um he's still waiting the application for his green card in america is still pending every time they talk on the phone he doesn't even ask for the children all the time he'll just say i'll send you a bit of money and just say hello hello put the phone down now watch this this is what the woman said happened recently 
every time she asks him, so how is your application for your green card? She said, oh, we're still waiting, you know, US immigration, uh, you know, she would make excuse about Donald Trump. It would say, you know, that I'm still waiting. So recently, a friend of a husband, right? Now, you see how things work. He didn't know he that I think they went on a trip. He said they went on a trip to don't know maybe Spain or some some country somewhere. Ah, they flew to Thailand. She said, uh, somebody one of some of a group of friends decided to get married in Thailand. Use Thailand as the location. So they flew to Thailand. A group of them got married by the beach and very beautiful view and all that. So she suspects that a husband must have told his friends, don't put my picture on Facebook. If you're gonna put pictures, don't put me, in, don't put the one that I'm in the picture, don't tag me, because the wife is also on Facebook. But one of them made a horrible mistake. Maybe it was intentional. Maybe they were trying to send a signal to this woman or just a pure display of foolishness, whatever you want to call it. So they went to Thailand because if you haven't got papers yet, how did you fly from the US to Thailand and then flew back? So that means he's already got his green card. His family doesn't know about it. You dig? So they've colluded to keep this woman in the dark, right? Now, the friend put the pictures on Facebook and tags a husband. So because a husband is on a Facebook you know, friends list, so she gets a notification on her timeline. You know how Facebook works. But, and then she said her husband barely posts pictures on, fa on his Facebook profile, sometimes just one or two selfies and then months, he wouldn't post anything. So she doesn't see anything except if he sends her one or two pictures via WhatsApp, right? So all of them having fun in Thailand, sees the husband. Now she said he has never shared the picture of the wife in the new wife in America, right? That sorted out his status, sees him with the new wife and their group of friends, you know, man. I would love to be a fly on the wall. The moment that woman discovered, you know, all hell broke loose. You can imagine emotions, tears, and complete heartbreak. And he was there with Cuban cigar, you know, woman on his lap. For what cooking is okay. For what party? Bidi Danny, Jaye, Hennessy, Jack Daniels, everything flying, locking lips with the with the new woman, you know having a good time and the woman back home has to witness that so of course before he realized that such and such has been posted on facebook before he got to untag himself of course this woman at the speed of light had downloaded all the pictures and all that bombarded him on whatsapp and then guess what she got absolutely blocked on WhatsApp. He said, she said he didn't even, as soon as the blue tick came up on WhatsApp and he had realized that, God damn, that she's found out. He didn't even type to say, oh, how did you see these pictures? He knew straight away. He just blocked his wife from back home. So she then bust in tears goes back to the in-laws, shows them, and he said, they didn't even flinch. The mother and father-in-law were just like, ah, basically what I'm saying in Yoruba is, uh, they, they basically just played it down. His parents were like, uh, you know, he had to do what he had to do to sort himself out. You know, life abroad is not easy, but he's been sending you money and all that. So, the woman is in a 
bad way, emotionally broken. She has now moved out of the in-law's house. She's with the kids. And then her parents, it took for the matter. Imagine she's been dealing with this for years. So when her parents then saw the pictures, she said her parents then reluctantly asked her to move back in. She said, till date, her mother still sort of take a dig at her that, oh, I think you should, you should have approached this, you know, reasonably. Do you know why? Because a man normally sends envelope of money to her mom. You dig? So, oh, you have to stop. You can see a man that's done your daughter dirty, but because of Mula, you dig? So the parents, because of course the cash flow has stopped from the man, they were telling her, um, you know, that oh, she should have, how could she have possibly, she's been celibate, nothing's happened. And that's the story. I remember one of the other stories that I read that's similar to this. She said, after waiting for five and a half years, so one day she couldn't cope mentally. And then she said to a man, are you still coming to get me? He's here in the UK, actually. And then thank you, AJT, for the super chat. And um, how are you still coming to get me? Because I, you know, I, I'm tired of waiting. And he just replied that, look, um, as much as I hate to say I've moved on, I will advise you to move on. And you can imagine how emotionally shattering. Now, you get the gist. So I want to talk about a couple of bullet points. Hit the like button, right? You see, for those of you that might have opted for, uh, what do you call it now? Long distance, I've got some notes here. Long distance relationship in the name of relocation. I think from my personal observation, and I stand to be corrected, one of the fundamental problems that people face is ignorance, right? And allowing yourself to be trapped by this toxic culture, particularly if you're a female, all right? You know, if you just allow things to play out and then it's like, oh, because you allow yourself, you know, this emotional blackmail because family, because in-laws, because my parents, or because my pastor, because of a religion, because what the Bible says, because of what the Quran says. You're going to end up in the shower crying over your decisions. You know, I'm, I read, like I said, a woman said she's been celibate for 12 years. Fam, I'm a dude. I'm sat here, man. I cannot, I cannot even imagine how somebody, this is not like, oh, maybe some government somewhere locked your husband away unfairly in prison. They, 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 um, you know, and then you're waiting. That's a personal choice. But like, and you know, the man is piping down another woman and you are waiting. <sighs> Firm. Because what? Is coming to get you to go abroad. Now, the, the one that the woman told me was when a husband traveled, her first bun was actually a six year old. Right? 12 years later, dude is about 19 now. The second bond is about 14. You dig? So I want to talk about a few, a few bullet points. Let me see. So before you start saying, yeah, 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 yeah. Some of, some of the reasons, right? Now, what you should prepare your mind for, in case you are contemplating and in the name of going abroad, yeah? Like I said in my live stream a couple of days ago. Now, it's not exactly bad. That's not what this is about. That if you choose to go abroad, please and please and please, I say it respectfully, you better make sure that the visas that you're going with, the visa that you're going with or your partner is going with is the legitimate, the correct visa that would help you to find your footings when you get to the other side. That will enable you and your children to join your partner. There is nothing like, oh, heaven will work miracles. 
Look, man, if you allow yourself to be trapped in this foolishness, you will pay a hefty price. And um, one of the hefty price is wasted time that you can never regain. Emotional damage, emotional drain, time wasted, one-sided parenting if you have children. Believe me, man. So down the line, when you start to shed tears, don't so point where there is nothing anyone can do about it. That's why it's very, very important because you see, we are suffering from, from something in the motherland, which is the Western drain, brain drain. We don't have a choice. They deliberately made the system back home unpalatable, which is the driving force behind why a lot of us just yeah, done. go to other parts of the world to find a better life. It's not exactly a crime that it's human nature. It's not black, uh, black people specific. All right. People migrate all the time for personal, you know, justifiable reasons as a dim fit. But all I'm clamoring for, all I'm banging on about is if you don't do it properly, why get palabai yala brodu? Now, let me, um, let me, so. If there is an issue of long distance, your partner is miles away from you. You see, communication, I've got a few. So if you see me looking this way, I've got a few notes. Communication will become a burden because there's a difference between if you live in the same um, jurisdiction, all right? Um, it's very easy. Even if you go to work, they go to work, you come back home under the same roof, you see them. Right? Communication is happening in real time. You're seeing yourself. You can smell them. You can breathe them in. You can touch yourselves. You can sit across the table. You can lie on the bed together. It could be whilst you're cooking in the kitchen. It could be whilst you're watching the TV. It could be whilst you're chilling and watching Netflix. You know, communication is a major cog in your existence. And um, once somebody's disappeared to the other side of the world and whereby they become inaccessible and all you're reliant upon is error, Ayelujara, the WhatsApp and all the telephone calls, communication becomes a burden. And once the communication becomes stretched thin, it starts to give you emotional breakdown, gradually, gradually, gradually. Now that's point number one. Now, the distance, it's more than likely to inflict you with what I call financial strain. Financial strain in the sense that, depending on the circumstances of your partner, more than likely they're going to be faced with all these challenges, especially if they are trapped in the shadow of the system. Often and often you'll be met with stories of they're struggling, they haven't got enough resources. And then what's happening is, you're disappointed, right? You're, you're, you're struggling financially, right? There's a crack in there and they're not able to adequately support you. And then you don't even have the opportunity to verify their story. That's not to say, oh, to just have a preconceived notion that your partner is lying. But what I'm saying is, if they're living in the shadow of the system, they might not be able to work. They might have papers to, to be able to get the right job. They become trapped. So what do you do? If the finances are not is not forthcoming, it reflects on you. And if you got children, it's even worse now, because there's no way you're going to say um, you're in love with someone, you're in a relationship, and you're going to tell me that money is not involved. Money plays a major part. Now, another interesting point that I've put down here is the social life gap. The social life gap. Um, social interaction. I mean, I understand it's, it's subjective. You don't have to necessarily go clubbing and stuff. But the distance, right? The partner that you claim to love is not there. They, they Thank you, Afiz Shobo Ali. Thank you. The social life gap is dead. I mean, the, I, mean the, I mean, sorry, the social interaction is dead. There is a social life gap. So there isn't social interactions. You can't do anything fun together. The benefits of doing fun things and having social interactions amongst yourself or with third parties, it helps you bond. 
believe me, I, I, I flip one of the things that I love. I love my woman's company. I'm not going to lie to you, man. I don't care who you work for. You work for a top IT firm and stuff. Quality time. These are priceless things that you spend with the person that you love. Fam, you can't put a price tag on it, man. If your social interaction is dead, you can't even sit down and goof around, have a laugh. And it also helps you to bond. And when you have your children around you, they learn from it. They see how you interact. And that's how they also grow. When you are missing, maybe the wife is missing or the husband is missing for a long time. It leaves a major crack in your relationship. Let me go down. Your environment changes you. That's the case of what I'm saying. What happens? The one, uh, the, the oh, thank you, uh, Kamaru Dean for the super chat, right? The, the other partner who is stuck in the diaspora, right? You have to, you are forced to acclimatize with a new environment, and it's usually unpalatable. Throw new way, you're faced with mountain of challenges. You're running from pillar to post, you're working during ungodly hours, you're stretched thin, you'll have two, three jobs. You, the environment then defines, creates, basically imposes on you a totally different structure of life, which your partner is not part of. It's not even there to share with you or to be able to manage with you. And what that does as well is it steers them in another direction. It exposes them to vulnerability and attention from parties that they shouldn't get attention from because they are alone they are these it's only human nature nobody is made out of iron nobody has a battery pack behind them as long as you got blood running through your veins you're more than likely going to misbehave now that's that i've got a couple of points in here so bear with me one second uh it's very hard man just bear with me, my notes. Ha! This one is my favorite. Not having sex, not making love. It sucks, man. You know, unfortunately in our society, they use um, this. Um, one of the worst things that can ever happen to you is somebody trying to regulate your sexual desires by your sexual needs, desires, and wants by aligning some so-called scripture. You see, one of the deadly things that happen in our society is some self-proclaimed spiritual charlatans. They will then start referring to, uh, thank you, Michael O, I'll read that in a moment, start referring to some scriptures to try to use that to tame you. It's natural. That's somebody... That you're sexually attracted to you're human you're you're an adult so also love making with the person that you genuinely are emotionally tied with or tied to or connected to whatever you want to call it man it helps you bond even more it's a spiritual thing man i put a note down this is the elephant in the room everybody likes to have sex as often as possible of course Except if there's, you know, there's a biological limitation, there are medical, you know, challenges and stuff like that. You're there, man. I salute those people, man. Be celibate, waiting for someone six, seven, eight, nine, ten years, twelve years, and then society will then dictate to you. There are plenty of ways to address the, these, but um, no matter how you are going to handle it, you have to talk about it. Some, 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 some couples would say, "Ah, oh, we do video calls, and it's nice. You exchange nudes, but how many nudes, man?" So another problem is because you are waiting for the other partner, right? Your personal life your intended progress for your personal life comes to a halt that's ultimately selfish that's absolutely selfish 
because the society wants you to prove a point to get their validation and even your so-called partner so these women that are waiting okomodani and sometimes men that are also in this situation because you find that your personal life grinds to a halt because you're busy waiting babolo to my jassy so your goals and dreams within the confines of that relationship you might not be able to achieve them depending on the complexities that come with you waiting you know lack of support from your partner because you got multiple children and lastly you see whether you like it or not one of the devastating outcomes of you know leaving apart is you will grow apart you definitely will grow apart you will you will you will grow apart because whilst your partner is over there they acclimatize with the different environment because of the challenges the new environment now if they they are in the states they are here in the uk they're still struggling the next 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 over bad when they're trying to get their papers and all that whether you like it or not that you are unable to see each other in our society they try to sugarcoat this and repackage this and label this as oh no 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 it's a lie it's delusional you are bound to grow apart somebody that you've not seen and you know and then when the other party then their attention has been genuinely taken by another human being that they have now grown to bond with emotionally how 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 do you carry on bonding with for example a man who is somewhere in the states who has adopted a relationship who's not I'm sorry who's involved himself in a relationship with another woman what in law bring it up now is constantly making love is giving attention is already bonded with someone else and all he has to do all the time is giving you fake assurances down the phone line and lying to you just sending you pittance and money just to keep you quiet and then you have the in-laws you have the families back home and then they hold you by the jugular and say oh you, you know you got you got you got support the husband and uh, and uh, um and then if you did try to rear your head and say no you've had enough or you can't carry on they will label you as being unreasonable as being selfish as an enemy of progress like they love to say and um and then you, a lot of you are trapped this these these right here is the core of the problem that the, one of the ladies that emailed me actually said franklin as i type this email i'm actually i'm 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 actually i'm in tears i'm in flood of tears she said she said because it's like sometimes i feel like i'm losing my sanity she said i i've actually i'm planning to save some money so i can run away from my in-laws house with my two children because i can't cope it's that every time i try to express myself my in-laws don't want to hear me my brothers a husband has four siblings two brothers two sisters they are like this always talking her down calling her names just to make sure that she's emotionally tied down it's a selfish interest it's selfish ah interestingly one of the women said while she's folding her arms and waiting for her man he's been able to make a bit of money in the west guess what when he ships goods so sometimes he buys cars and loads of vans and loads from the states and sends it back to to be sold so he said a husband doesn't even talk to her about go and help me do this go and help me clear the car go and do this go and find a buyer for this take this money she, he gets his siblings to sort everything out and when she asks questions they ask her to go sit down they they shut her out even the mother in law told her not too long ago that why are you asking questions why are you always coming across as jealous how can you be bloody jealous by asking questions about your husband do you see 
So they have selfishly put their claws in his affairs. A lot of families do this. These are inconvenient conversations. That way, you're welcome. If any, some of you lot are probably turning your nose upwards. It's more, more than likely some of you brothers, me or there, on you know what I mean? You me or on you. I don't care what you feel like, man. The truth has to be told. I take you back to the start before I wrap up. This is why the premise of this is so that you don't bust into tears down the line. It's very important hmm, to know exactly what you're about to dip your legs into because these has pretty much destroyed a lot of people's lives. Some of these women watched my video. There's, a, there's two of them that said, oh, um, she's never heard of my channel. Somebody sent her my last live stream via WhatsApp. So that made her watch that video, came to my channel, like some of my videos, and I said, oh, thank you. So she then, the next day, sent me this email. The woman said, Franklin, I'm tired of crying. I've cried and cried and cried. Said, uh, even her children would ask that, are you sure daddy is ever coming back? One of them said, my husband, he doesn't even ask about the kids. He just said, just you know, say hello to them, say hello to them. You just call and you just put the phone down. Uh, and, and you know what's even funny? It's so patronizing. The man would even, who are these men? Like, your, your wife is back home with children. You then send the monthly upkeep to your older brother, who will then distribute the money in tiny chunks and hand it to your woman. That's the height of disrespect. You might as well break up with a woman, man. That's wrong. You are asking your older brother to go and verify how much is your children's school fees. Oh, come on, man. You're giving your older brother money to go and pay your children's school fees. Don't give the money to your woman. Oh, give her this much. If she needs anything else, let her come to you. Wow. Ah, there's, a, there's this woman. Uh, she said, you know, boat, boat, like Uber, like Uber and all these uh, taxi uh, company. She actually said when she got tired of just sitting at home because there's no jobs and stuff, a husband, you know, and then she said she asked a husband to please send her like a people carrier or like a car so that she can start um, driving, doing taxiing, you know, like a boat or this Uber taxi driving, so she can start bringing in money. The in-laws held a family meeting and they said, oh, it's not dignifying for their son's wife to be on the road driving, um, you know, doing taxiing. And also, they think it's an avenue for her to um be using you know that car to be picking up some other men that they know nothing about man no a house of coffee said frankly let's blame the women too who have accepted this ridiculous behavior of course if you're a woman if you are in a similar situation it's not one-sided of course i'm condemning those men that i don't know but of course you are equally responsible this is not me trying to pat you on the back that's why I'm saying, learn to have conversations. If you allow yourself to be governed by emotional blackmail or abuse or, or religious chains or by, oh, 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 because my in-law said you're afraid to speak up. If, if your man is clamoring to go abroad, some of you, okay, let's even say this. Let me say this. If let's say that conversation came up, the husband said he wants to go to America. Let's say you know nothing about traveling abroad. You haven't got a clue. This is the best point to start from. If you don't have a computer at home, go to an internet cafe, pay for one or two hours, sit behind the computer, go on the US website, 
Go and read about the types of visa. What are you allowed to do with a visitor's visa? If my husband gets this type of visa, is he going to be able to apply for me, file for me and the kids? Oh, these are the limitations around this type of visa. Print out the information, go home, tell your man, once he's come back from work, he's had his dinner, the kids are in bed, Lagbaja, I'm a Lagbaja, sit down, let's have a chat. You know, you said you wanted to get a visitor's visa to go to the state. Ah, yes, yes, yes. Oh, you wanted to go to Canada. Yes, yes, yes. Right. I checked online and I saw this, 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 this. It, it, it wouldn't appear that this is the, you know, type of visa. Even you, as soon as you touch the soil of the U.S., you're going to become illegal. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a friend of mine that said, nope. Just maybe. It might be a smart idea, maybe to call it quits before he jumps on the plane. And I know somebody's going to say, oh, Franklin, it's not that easy, but I love him. No, if somebody's willing to go blindly at your emotional detriment, at the detriment of your personal life and the personal life of your children. So what type of love are you latching onto? That's just, it's just common sense analysis here, man. If that makes sense. Thank you, also Kathy. Also Kathy said, it's your life after all. So how can you allow one <laughs> idiot to manipulate you in such way? I'm just telling you, man. Thank you, Gina. I'm just telling you. I don't know if it's fear of what's wrong with that. In my relationship, we have chats, we have conversations. Why should you be afraid to speak? Because religiosity, number one. Imagine somebody sits down because the the man. Let me let me say this because for most part, even though this is not gender specific, I've got to say this. I've got to say this before I forget. Even though it's um. It's um, it's not gender specific, right? But for the most part, when partners are going to part ways, it's usually the man that goes first in most cases. Women too, it might be you have cases where women go and the man has to wait behind, like the story that I told you a couple of days ago. But for, for the most part, it's the man. And again, there is something that's wrong about the the the, the way the society has lied to us for many years and they have inf inflicted our minds with lies because there is also these undue pressure, undue, unfair responsibilities that are placed on the shoulder of men. Oh, Okorinye, you're a man. You've got to go and um, go and strike. Don't get me wrong. I'm a man. Um, I would always, I would fight till I die to protect my family. But if I want to travel blindly to America with the wrong visa, that doesn't make me a man. That makes me a bloody idiot. So if I leave my missus and the kids back home in, in the motherland and I'm coming to England with the wrong visa, it doesn't make me a man. In fact, by jumping on that plane, I've already set myself up for failure. They will tell you crap about, oh, you know, yeah, he's, 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 he's the man. He's a man. Let, 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 let. You should go and let, let him let him go. Let him go and find, you know, his footings. Let him go and get X, Y, Z. Thank you, Gil. Appreciate you for the super chat. Thank you. Let him go and find his footings. It's a lie. Just like the, the society lies to you that men shouldn't show emotions. Men shouldn't cry. Fam, think about Jomi Bonu as your man. Busa Kumo told you that doesn't make me less of a man if i want to cry if i'm watching a movie or i see a video on instagram of it hits me it hits me off guard or hits me somewhere man i'm let the waterworks go man who told you you know you got me a man's man you very rough it's a lie you're a, you're you're a man you wake up you're in the shower you realize there is there is there is a bump or there is a lump in your left in your left scrotum, right? In the name of being a man, instead of you to pick the phone and tell your woman, hey, go see the doctor. You're you're, you're there. You're forming hard guy. That might be the beginnings of testicular cancer. Who knows? 
No, no, it's all right, man. It's all right. It's okay. I'm a man. I'm a man's man. I'm a man. And you, there's, there's a lump in your ball. You're farming man. Hard guy. Man. And then, and then, and then, and then, before, before you know, before you then decide, ah, yeah, can eat me, my little talk, mama, can eat come in, I guess I'm coming in, talking in cocoa, ah, ah. Then the woman starts, be doctor, be GP. Before you know, they tell you that thing is spread across your body. Your body can fight back, and then they tell you, you got six months to leave. Bang, you're done. And then to make it worse, no life insurance, nothing. Farmers in the busy, yeah, wo, bear, tears, you're done, gone, close chapter. It's the, the toxic conditioning that we've grown to know in the society. You're a man. Let him go. And also, you have all these sort of these dodgy elders within the families. Like if the wife sits down and she tries to be expressive, uh, I don't want to be left alone. And No, 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 no. Be, be, be quiet. Let your husband go to America first. He is the man. He has to go first. You know, you, you honor him. You, you wait with the children. You must honor him. Let him go. And the woman sits there. Every of her feelings, all of the things that she's meant to discuss with her partner within the confines of that relationship, in a private conversation that the partner should listen to and give consideration to, they will suppress it in the name of toxic culture. I don't power cool on here now. And then a lot of these so called men. You get to the West and then the so-called man, you realize that the only toxic option that you have is you have to go and amalgamate your feelings with another woman. Then you gain access to another woman's honeypot and then you leave your white substance in there. And then you procreate with her and then to make matters worse. And then because you are now crossed, caught in the middle of crossroads emotionally, the woman one lit guilty conscience. When you go see me, you lie to this one that you love her. She lets go, lets you in into her soul. She gives you papers. You then tip it all after two kids here. You want to go and bring the one back home as well. And then this one finds out. She gets immigration on your tail. She rips your paper apart. And then you call them evil. Tawani Wiri. You want to now? Oh, she did bad correct visa. Come we are weird, honey. You buzzing, man. Let me look at some of your comments in here. I'm telling you exactly, friend, and that's how my friend husband died in 2019 of cancer. She's now left with three kids because of the man never for once said anything. She was hiding it. The way we are wired, I mean, the, the way a lot, a lot of things play out for us within the black community, they are deeply rooted in toxic culture. They said, the elders said, you must do it this way. You, you must keep your mouth shut as a woman. Don't rear your head. Your voice must remain at the bottom because he is a man. This is not trying, this is not me trying to say a man should be suppressed. That's not what we're talking about, man. A lot of you women and men, but like I say, women are the, in terms of if you've put this on a graph, Women suffer the most, man. Do you know how many of our brothers? And again, you know, you, you see, you, you feel sorry for the brother too. That I hear, I met, in fact, very interestingly, a few days ago, I bumped into an older gentleman who is um, 53 this year. We were talking about the pandemic and he watches my channel. He's like, oh, Franklin, we just had to be of a chit chat, you know. And um, the brother opened up, man. He said, Franklin, it's not easy. He said, I've been in England for 11 years. There is something interesting about this man. To be fair to that brother, he loves his wife. His wife is back home, yeah? He loves his wife. And um, because he doesn't want to be disloyal, he told me man to man, because he doesn't want to be disloyal. And of course, because of the consequences of doing anything, sham marriage and getting busted, right? But because he loves his woman, right? He refuses 
to get with another woman to get his papers. I didn't ask him, oh, I didn't ask if in 11 years, have you slipped into another sugar wall? That's none of my business. That's unto the, the gentleman. But he was then telling me that, Franklin, you know what? I've had enough. I've managed to save a bit of money. I've built a bungalow back home where my woman lives in with my children. Said, I'm planning on going back because I don't stand a chance of even getting anything here. It's very hard. And he feels really lonely. But I didn't ask him that in the 11 years, as, um, as any sister, you know, uh, provided you willingly access to their honeypot, mother likely there would, there would have been, man. there would have been, because if, if, if he says no, then I would expect him to have been walking in front of me with a sagging ball bag, you know, filled to the brim with spunk so to speak which of course of course that's a bit of exaggeration it shouldn't be sagging that's another medical problem but you get the gist right i'm just messing around he's in his 50s so he's now contemplating on going back home <laughs> so you get what i'm saying man so you want to go abroad, man. I've given you my bullet points about, um, about you know, what's likely to happen when, you know, these... It, it's sad, really. It takes us back to the, 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 the very negative impact of colonialism on the motherland, man. This, this is... You see what's playing out? Destroying the lives of a lot of us one step after the other. It's crazy. There is a Western brain drain. It's been put in place. That's why Africa is on its knees. And some of our best brains, best minds, people are being forced out. You can't blame people. But at the same time, look at the impact on lives. In fact, for, 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 for a lot of families back home, I mean, we that live in the West now, you know, you live in the West, you've been here donkey years. You know that, come on, man. The system is, is kind of glorified. Regardless of what you get out of it, like, it's kind of blown out of proportion. Come on, man. Some people back home, they see it as ultimate achievement. That's why they are ready to do anything. They would disregard any helpful advice. They just want to jump on that plane and touch down a Heathrow, touch down a JF Kennedy, and yeah, America, here I come. Then once the honeymoon goes past, the reality hits them, bang. Then they soon realize, and then they're trapped. They're like a hamster in a wheel. Before you blink, a year has gone past, two years, three, four, five. Before you know, it's 10 years. Moral of the story, every one man hold onto your sugar walls, every woman hold onto your pipe. Are you goddamn right? <laughs> so yeah that's that's me done people that's that's pretty much my my uh my stories i told this ladies co collectively that i will you know be um talking about this um ah somebody's saying something that i'll be talking about this today let me respond to that when you see when people say you can't really blame them let me mj chester said if the economy was good back home i'm sure they wouldn't leave Listen, I'm not sure if you paid attention to what I said. I talked about the Western brain drain. If I'm not acknowledging the Western brain drain, the things that have been put in place before I was born, before my father was even born, for Africa to deliberately remain on its knees, this is the impact. So this is not a blame game. We are having adult heart-to-heart -heart conversations. My bro, and 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 to make it to make it even worse, I've said it before. We lack togetherness in the West. That's why, if if a, if, if a man jumps on the plane blindly, you come here, you are left alone by yourself. More than likely, when the people hear, when you cry and you shed tears, you cry blood. I'm struggling. I haven't got papers. The, the only option they will present you with, in fact, some people are good at matchmaking. 
Like, oh, bro, I've got my wife back on my promise. And they were like, whoa, 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 relax about your wife, man. Yo, I know a woman. How old are you? You're 39, right? I know, I know a woman. She's 36. She's a nurse. You know, she's looking for a good man. She has a home already. She's on, she's on the property ladder. She has a good job. You know, just well, we can match make because she's, she's, she's basically concerned about body clock. Let's link you up. She's a British. She's just be there, be a good man. You know, get in there, get her pregnant, and you know she'll fight for you, my guy. Sort yourself out. And then you think that's not bad, you know. All I have to go in there is just vigorously pay attention to the sugar walls, and um, that could be an avenue to solve myself. And then your, your woman back home is on the other end of the phone. Licky, Licky, I love you. That's when conscience grabs you by the neck. Okay, Licky, nice speaking to you. I love you. I love you too. Yeah, Licky, you're not saying you love me. <clears throat> I, I I love you. I, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. The feeling, the feeling is mutual. Yeah. Because you saw now, Licky and kept me bullying me. You know, and then you say, Ah, Licky, you didn't, you didn't used to talk to me like this. Ah, Licky, what was going on? She must share me. Licky, don't forget the agreement. Don't don't forget what we talked about. Look at you promised to take me to America. <laughs> Lake is trapped. Maybe at the at the at the time that you're calling Lake, Lake, what's going on? I'm not receiving any updates. When are we going to start filling the forms to go to America? The other lady is in the bedroom. Lake. Oh, maybe she's a beautiful African American sister. Lake. Lekai, <laughs> just maybe. <laughs> Lekai, <laughs> baby, is everything all right? Uh, uh, everything's all right. It's just they call me from back home. They are, <clears throat> they, yeah, it's just my sister that's calling me from back home. That my, it's okay, man. Ah, uh, shit, man. Shit, man. <laughs> Like, hi, baby, when you're coming into the bedroom, get the custard. Ah, okay, no problem. The custard is already warm. I'm bringing it into the bedroom. Okay, I'll, I'll talk to you later. Like, I love you. Yeah, it's okay. I love you too. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Boop. The harsh reality. And I, you can imagine whilst Lake Lake is trying to get the sugar, get the custard into the bedroom, and he's thinking in the bathroom, he's thinking, Lake Kai, yes, baby, I'm 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 coming. It's the truth, man. Is it fair? No, it's not. Is it the harsh reality? Hell yeah. Can't stress, you know, this enough. And also, there was one that somebody told me. Oh, Annie. There was one that somebody told me. Thank you, Annie. That said, there was one that somebody told me before. I'll close on this, all right? Somebody had waited and waited and waited for their husband. And one thing led to another. I remember somebody telling me this. She knew that the husband was with another woman, but the argument was, I need this woman to get my papers. One day, the woman back home in Nigeria traveled somewhere for some training, professional training. She had to do farm. Been lonely for close to six years. 
the hotel that she was staying met somebody at the bar conversation meant led to conversation Woof! if there was olympics for busting your legs wide open that system you know like there's something about the way the brain is wired she has tried man you know sometimes in the heat of the moment you just don't know sometimes all it takes is just somebody says oh oh my sister oh sister you wow i like your shoes you oh you, you like my shoes <laughs> my, my shoes <laughs> my, my these shoes <laughs> it's not just about the shoes man no attention somebody gave that woman a five minutes attention farm that's a dad who be a teloni the legs went in two separate directions. God damn. And what tends to happen is your emotion is so heightened. The sexual deprivation is so heightened. Every stroke, every slide will touch into the core of your brain. God damn. Woof. Every single stroke. <clears throat> it doesn't even matter if that lovemaking only lasted for three minutes. Woo! It will be the greatest three minutes of all time. Woo! Oh, Lord. If she has a wig... She will be like, whoo, look. They will smash that woman through the window before she touches the ground floor, back up the stairs. God damn. Every stroke is touching the base of that woman's brain. Six years. And then when everything ends, <sighs> okay, I I'll call you out. <sighs> Yeah, okay, I'll, I'll speak to you later. And she, then, then, then guilty conscience kind of, you know, snicks in. That I think bear can go. <laughs> Somebody said even a 30 second noodle would do the job. I'm telling you, man. And then, and that's when you, you who is in the States, you have the audacity to be calling and hello, you're in the States. You're piping down your new woman. Uh, 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 hello. Uh, uh, my mom said you 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 traveled to, to Joss. The woman will be like. Yeah, I went I went for a professional professional training. I went for a professional training. Yeah. The professional training is the professional training is designed to last 3 days. Uh, so when are you going home? Okay, well, we'll get back again. Okay, bye. That's when reality sets in. Facts of life. What's even what's even funny is so when the man then finds out this is what's really evil about our society when <laughs> when the man then finds out that his wife's 6 years of celibacy has been absolutely shattered to smithereens by a good samaritan they will he would then collude with his family and the wider society to then maliciously label this woman as being non-virtuous, as being a slag, as being, will you keep quiet? You are having a bloodshot in your genitalia where you are on the other side of the world. And then you have the audacity to want to control what happens to this woman's honeypot and carry on depriving her because you think she's your commodity. No, she's not.
I'll share with you for look at that. Can you imagine? To my more, you more sense if you look at your shoe. So, what the boy can't look like a motel now. Will you keep quiet? Only la let more. Come on, man. You've got power no money. Boy can't look like a little la let more hotel. You do want la let more in New Jersey. Go. You buy my economy. I'm just saying, you know what I mean? That's me, don't mess your boy, Franklin. Thank you for the super chat. I hope we can learn something from it, man. If you don't want to be in that type of situation, palaver. Communication is king. Communication is key. Have these conversations. Let me tell you, man, if you know you don't want to be trapped in that type of vicious cycle, don't get involved. It might be difficult. Don't get involved. There is nothing the society can do to help you in that regard. And if you're in that situation, I hope you find a way out, man. Thank you. Don't forget to smash the like button. Uh, thank you for the super chat once again. Uh, if you want to support my channel, you can join my Patreon. For the price of a cup of cappuccino for as little as three pounds a month, you can see the link in my description. Scrolling down the page, you can support me via Cash App. And if you don't, you're not obligated to give me anything. If you don't at least like my video, please share it on your platforms. Leave comments. Let's engage below. And I will definitely, definitely catch you in the very next one, man. Peace and love. Salute.